experts reveal vital survival tip if you unexpectedly fall into deep water. Just being near blue spaces, the sea, rivers and lakes can make us feel more relaxed because water triggers our parasympathetic nervous system helping our body rest and digest. This calming effect which slows our heart rate and lowers blood pressure explains why so many people find joy and solace in water related activities. But enjoying the water also has serious risks that cannot be ignored. In the UK, drowning is a leading cause of accidental deaths, surpassing even home fires and cycling accidents. Each year, around 400 people drown accidentally in the UK's coastal and inland waters, and notably, 40% of these incidents occur when people are not even planning to be in the water, such as when they are caught off guard by a rising tide while walking along the coast or jumping in to rescue a dog. This is a glaring reminder that it is not just traditional water users who get into danger. According to the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents, there are over 100,000 water rescues each year. And these rescues are tragedies which leave lasting impacts, with survivors and their families often suffering from severe injuries or post-traumatic stress disorder. Incident report data tells us that globally, men are 80% more likely to drown than women, especially middle-aged men and teenage boys. This higher risk is attributed to men spending more time in the water and engaging in riskier behaviors like swimming alone at night, drinking alcohol, and neglecting life jackets. Social pressures and tendency to underestimate risks by assuming the water looks, looks safe when it is not contributes to the higher drowning rates among men too. My team, the writer says, of neuroscience and communication academics at Bournemouth University are working with the Royal National Lifeboat Institute to, re uh, to research how to improve water safety communications using virtual reality simulations to record brain activities when immersed in water. By using emotional sensors in smart glasses, we're, we are discovering how emotional loads like fear are experiencing, are experienced during the vital virtual reality scenarios when falling into water unexpectedly from a boat or a cliff. We will be demonstrating the technology at an exhibition at Bournemouth University during August 2024 to highlight the risks of being near water and to collect more data. So far, our research has highlighted the challenges and complexities of human emotions in making safer decisions in the water and the role that instinct plays in decision-making in respect to gender. Men seem to exhibit a different perception of risk and a tendency towards impulsive decision-making, whereas women tend to be more precautionary and greater inclination towards safety and risk avoidance. Activities also affect the risk in the water. People tend to prepare for activities like paddleboarding and kayaking with the right gear and skills. This means they are usually safer than in-water play on inflatable toys such as lilos, which are often used without preparation and are also easily swept out in strong currents. Unexpected water entry, such as being caught by tides while walking along the shore or taking a selfie at the edge of a cliff top is even more dangerous due to the element of surprise and lack of preparation when falling into the water. This unpreparedness significantly increased the risk of drowning as well as the fact that some people who unexpectedly fall into the water are usually fully clothed and may also have a fear of water too. Drowning fatalities often occur on inland waterways because these canals, stream, locks and lakes are much colder than the sea deceptively calm and hide numerous dangers. For instance, the water could be unexpectedly deep. There could be hidden currents or rubbish such as broken glass and an old bicycle. The water may be polluted and may and be a serious health a threat to health, or it could just be difficult to get out because of steep, slippery banks. If you're struggling in the water, it says tilt your head back with ears submerged, relax and move your hands and uh, to help you stay afloat and float to live. Now, float to live, instinct plays a crucial role in how we respond to water. We could be relaxed and swimming one minute, then water conditions quickly change and a rip current can catch you off guard. Our instincts are often to swim hard against the rip current, 
but the best thing is to do is swim parallel to the shore to escape the rip. People who are not experienced and educated around the rip current probably won't uh, know how to spot a rip current, let alone how to get out of one safely. One sudden, sudden entry into cold water, on a sudden entry, our body reacts automatically to heighten our alertness and adrenaline levels due to cold water shock. That makes us gasp, hold our breath, and try to swim hard until the point of exhaustion. Overriding that instinct could save your life. Whether you're planning a refreshing dip, a leisurely stroll along the coastline, or a run along a canal, it's crucial to know how to stay safe. This knowledge can be the difference between a safe outing and a tragic accident. Research shows that floating, following these five simple steps are highly effective. They are easy to remember and can be done by anyone, regardless of swimming ability or whether you are in fresh water or salt water. First, keep your head back with your ears submerged to keep your airways open. Resist the urge to panic. Try to relax and breathe normally. Gently move your hands, paddling them, as this will aid to keep, uh, in keeping afloat. Don't fret if your legs sink. Everyone's buoyancy is different. Finally, spread your arms and legs, This, as this really helps maintain your stability in the water. And if you spot someone in distress, don't jump in to rescue them. Instead, shout at the float, uh, to lift, shout out the float to lift steps and immediately call your local emergency hotline to ask for the Coast Guard. This is by senior lecturer, lecturer Jill Nash, Bournemouth University in the, the UK from the conversation under Creative Commons license on Science Alert. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.